one of the greatest actors of our time. It was Al Pacino's instinct and intensity that convinced Francis Ford Coppola to cast him as Michael Corleone in The Godfather, a role that's gone down in history. Although a famous student of Lee Strasberg and the method technique of acting, Al Pacino has always been careful to let instinct drive his choices as an actor. One has to be careful about the technique because, you know, that can be, that can come first. And when the technique comes first, I think that starts to show in the performance. I mean, the, the, the technique is, a, is an after sort of, that the enthusiasm's first, the need. You know, a plank and a passion, as they say. You know, a plank meaning the stage and a passion is all you need. But no, you need a plank, a passion, and an audience. That's what you need. Coppola's gamble on an unknown actor paid off. The film was a hit. Pacino became an instant household name and received an Oscar nomination, the first in a long list of successes. For Pacino, acting means completely immersing himself in the character. It's the involvement, it's the it's the fact that you're playing a part and you know where you are, you know who you are, you know where you're going, you know where you have been, and you know what's gonna happen to you. I mean, that's fun. While filming The Godfather, Pacino worked quickly, fearing he was about to be fired. After the film's success, he became famous for making bold decisions, signing on for films like Serpico, The Godfather 2, Scarface, and Dog Day Afternoon, some of the biggest films of the 70s and 80s. Today, his approach to acting remains the same. It's a question of trying to keep open about every role, trying to keep at least the uh, the original uh, sort of enthusiasm you had when you were a younger actor to a part, you try to, you hope that that's there. And, and, and I think, and, 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 and like it's like you're starting, always starting over again. A great lover of theatre, in particular Shakespeare, Pacino has won many awards for his work on the stage. Perhaps the fact you can't watch yourself in a play is the reason he doesn't like to watch himself back in his movies. I mean, I don't watch any movies more than two or three times that, I, that I'm not in. You know, why would I suddenly watch mine? You know, it just seems, it seems you watch it when you're supposed to, when, it's, when maybe you can offer something to it. Maybe, uh, but there have been movies I've been in that I just really don't like to watch. I don't like, I don't like what I did and I, I just don't, uh, so there are those movies. Well, he may not like to watch his films, but we do. An Oscar, Emmy and Tony Award winning actor, Al Pacino is equally at home in a major Hollywood blockbuster or a small art house release. A true lover of the acting process, he's also tried his hand at directing. For me, it was a real learning on the job uh, program, you know, learning while you do it. Although he's been involved on both sides of the camera, he believes the two should be kept separate. I prefer to act and be directed than direct myself in acting because I think uh, another energy comes when you're just focusing on acting. When you're directing and acting, I think your direction sort of gets in the way of your acting. As brilliant an actor as he is, it still took nine Oscar nominations before he got a win. In 1993, he picked up his first Academy Award for Scent of a Woman. His own reaction took him by surprise. It's happened to me where after a situation like that happens is when I experience it. It was the next day, two days later, that the impact of what had happened to me, that I, that I got an Oscar, and, and, and the experience of it and, and, and everything that goes with that, it was very clear to me then what, why people, you know, get excited about it. Over the course of his career, Al Pacino has played many a tough guy in some pretty violent films. He starred in crime films like Carlito's Way, Heat and Donnie Brasco, though his attitude to violence in film has remained philosophical. When violence takes the place, of course, of the uh, uh, imagination and it becomes gratuitous, as it does often, then I think it's, uh, of course, useless. But when it is in, in concert with the metaphor, uh, it, it has a value. And sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. If you're trying to make a point with it, and I've seen films that have done that, and I've seen films that haven't, and it's just that difference. And I think that's been going on for quite a while now. I mean, as, as long as I've been an actor in films, that argument has, has uh, been there. In The Devil's Advocate, 
Pacino played the role of John Milton, a director of a law firm that hires a young hotshot played by Keanu Reeves. The satanic Milton pushes Reeves' morals to the very edge. Then in The Insider, Any Given Sunday and Insomnia, Pacino played characters that make the viewer question their moral standpoint. That's why we respond when we go to the movies or the theater because we feel ourselves in the actors. Because to do it in life is a, is a difficult, uh, is a difficult uh, thing. It's upsetting in life. But when you do it in, in the form of, of play and movie and fantasy, it's interesting, it's able, you're able to, uh, uh, to do it as, as a form of expression. A realist about the business side of filmmaking, Pacino has no qualms in signing up for a big Hollywood blockbuster. I do care about box office. I think that certain pictures you make with the hope that the box office will, that there'll be people that come. You, you make them, it, it's, it's sort of done in that spirit. It, it isn't less or more than the other kind of pictures. It's just different. It's what you would call, a, you, you, you're hoping that the picture will be popular and would appeal because it, it goes after that kind of thing. It goes after uh, uh, entertaining. Uh, it goes after uh, 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 those those values, and I think when it does do that and, and, and reaches to a lot of people, I, I enjoy a good box office. And when it comes to box office success, you can't go past the Ocean series of casino heist movies, cracking scripts mixed with all-star casts made for box office gold. And in Ocean's 13, Pacino was back with some old co-stars in Andy Garcia from The Godfather and the beautiful Ellen Barkin from Sea of Love. It's very comfortable. I know him. I know the way he works. He knows me. He knows the way I work. Not only is he obviously an extraordinary artist, but he's, he's one of the most generous people, you know, as an actor. He's like family to me, you know. He's uh, my Uncle Michael. Ocean's 13 had old friends and Hollywood's new elite. But in the end, it came down to the fundamentals. The reason I did it is because it was a good script. I, 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 uh, I really was, not that I was surprised, it was just you don't expect something that good in, in, in something that's already been done and it's a franchise and it's the third one, so. So, but it, it, was, it was surprisingly good. The first day he came to work, he said to me, what do these guys think of me? You know, uh, Clooney, Pitt and Damon, what do they think of me? I said. It's very simple, Al. How, what did you think of Brando when you did The Godfather? That's what they think of you. Al's such a great foil. Um, he's one guy you really want to get, you know, and you enjoy it when he gets it, when he plays a bad guy, you know. So uh, he makes it really fun. Pacino's worked with plenty of amazing directors. Francis Ford Coppola, Michael Mann, Christopher Nolan. But Ocean's 13 was the first time he'd worked with Oscar-winning Steven Soderbergh, and he felt in safe hands. He creates this ambiance, which is one of the great things directors do, and all great ones do it. And you feel that comfort place, that place of comfort, which allows you then, as an actor, to, uh, to free up, so to speak. And you know that he's watching, and you know that he's a sensor. He's got a real sensor in him, and you trust that. Automatically, I mean, I never worked with him. I met, I met him and talked to him a little bit first and knew he was, he, he was a sensitive person with sensibility, but to work with him, it was a real treat. An actor's job is to create a character, but finding the similarities between the character and yourself is what Pacino sees as one of the keys of acting. It's always looking for the character. That's what the actor's trying to find. You're always trying to hook up your own personal stuff with the character. You're trying to merge together this, uh, this union of the character and you. And sometimes you, you make it and sometimes you miss it. But that's the effort. I think most actors really do that, whether they do it consciously or unconsciously. I think they, they're trying to connect themselves with the part so that it'd be, you know, they could express themselves. That is what the effort is. Pacino's effortless way of expressing his craft comes down to his love of acting. I enjoy film. I enjoy making, being involved in film. I'm uh, not to bore you and go on and on. I don't mean to be wrong about these things, but I spent most of my life as an actor on stage and in film, and I never quite connected to movies in a way in terms of me. I've always felt the theater was where I started, and I would always go back to stage. And Robert Dillon 
sort of uh, coaxed me into film in 1985, 86. And that's when I started to actually work with film myself. And of course, I've been fortunate, really lucky. You can't have a conversation about gangster films without mentioning Al Pacino. He set the standard, and he did it without any of the physical characteristics of a stereotypical Hollywood leading man. He did it based on talent. He truly is one of the greatest actors of our time. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's all together better on screen and at mnc.tv.